Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Spirituality with Gabriella. So first things first, I want to apologize. I know it's a little bit dark right now, so I'm sorry if the lighting is not great. I moved my table, so it's in a slightly different place, but I am going to try and get it closer to the natural light for next time. But for the purposes of this time, please accept my apology. So today we're doing a pick a card reading and this is a cool topic. It was a request. So we are going to explore whether you've ever had dreams or visions as related to your future spouse or whether they've ever had dreams or visions about you. And so we're kind of exploring the soul level connection that is present here more so than anything tangible that's happened in our, in our 3D reality. So, if that calls to you, please go ahead and um, watch this reading. Remember, if you like it, give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it if you feel so inclined. And I'm now going to introduce the three piles that we're working with today. The first one here is the green fluorite. The second one here is the clear quartz with black tourmaline. And the third one here is the blue aura quartz. So take a second and turn your thoughts and your intuition inwards. And then once you find the pile that speaks most to you, you can fast forward using the timestamps below and get your own personal reading. And I will see you all there. Thank you so much. All right, pile one, welcome to your reading. So we have your first card here, which is the five of cups. And then I'm going to shuffle some more cards and see what comes through. We have the three of crystals which is the Three of Pentacles. Strength. And the King of Cups. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with these four here and just dig into this. So first things first, I do not think that your future spouse has seen you in a dream or vision, and I don't think that you have necessarily seen them in a dream or vision. However, what I feel is that you personally have a very strong intuitive understanding of what this person's personality is going to be like. That's what it feels like. It feels like your future spouse is a little bit unclear on what you will be like. I don't think that they've had the space and time to think about it extremely deeply yet, but I can tell you that they are excited for you to come into their life, and I can tell you that they want to learn with you and they want to grow with you. I feel that you are the more intuitive one when it comes to both of you, so we have the Five of Cups here. There's more in the picture than either of you know or think right now. So I think that if you are open to it, and if you're really open to bringing in intuitive messages, to me it feels like your spirit guides would start to send you messages about your future spouse. But I feel that you have to ask. Your spirit guides don't always know to send that stuff to you if you don't ask or if you're not necessarily fully opened or attuned to it. When we see the Five of Cups here, um, one thing before I move on is that we always have upright cups, and then we have ones that have fallen down. There are different interpretations and different tarot decks, but there are always upright cups that are still holding treasures that even we do not know yet. So even here, there's this one, and the cup is like, it's being shed. Um, there's light on it. It kind of clears the path to an opening. And so I feel that light is going to be shed on this situation for you, and it might even start today. It might even start now. Perhaps from now on, you decide to ask your spirit guides and angels more mindfully to send you dreams and visions of your future spouse. Now, as I'm saying this, I do feel that some of you have had some kind of contact on a spiritual level with your future spouse. Some of you have either had strong past lives with them, or you have seen them in a dream, but you did not necessarily see their face. It could have been like you saw their outline, you saw their figure, 
you got a sense of their personality and who they are, but you did not necessarily see their face, and that's why this is still a little bit fuzzy to you. I'm going to skip this for a second and address the strength card here, because when we see the strength card, this is not just about time and things being a little slow, it's about persistence and it's about having a strong will. And so I feel that on a deep intuitive level, you know that there is somebody waiting for you, you know that it's worth the wait. However, on our 3D level, it can definitely be frustrating. It can feel like, oh my gosh, when am I going to meet this person? Why me? Why is it taking so long? Why is it so slow? Well, your spirit guides and angels only send you people when you're truly ready for them. And I think that what I can say about your energy is it feels like your spirit guides and angels will start sending you signs in the near future. So it might not be right this second, but I feel in the near, near future, you're going to start getting signs, signals, visions, dreams about your future spouse. And the more that you are emotionally and um, mentally ready to bring in that person, the more those signs will come to you more and more clearly. So just be open to them. One of the things you can do is you can sit down and you can say to yourself, I am a clear channel. I am an open channel. You know, really repeating those words to yourself is going to help a lot. And you can even do it in front of the mirror if you would like, because that's going to help you feel like you are beholden to these intuitive messages, which of course you are. But remember, you are beholden. Um, it will require strength to navigate it. And maybe something hasn't happened yet that is tangible for you. But you might understand on a deep level that that person is waiting for you and you might even get a sense of their personality. There is definitely a strong bond here in that you are learning together, you and your future spouse. And I feel that you two have to be strong on your own before you truly come together. It's kind of like you're circling each other at orbit right now. So you're both doing your separate things, but you're both kind of circling around, um, not quite touching each other yet, not quite in each other's lives 100%, but it feels like you know that they are going to come into your life. And for some of you, this is going to take up to two years, I think. Two years is always kind of the <laughs> timeline. I'm not sure why that is, but it does seem to be the timeline for a lot of people. So a lot of you will meet them in the next two years, and during that time, as you lead up to meeting them, you will start to get more dreams, visions, and sensations. For many of you who are watching this video, I'm just going to describe briefly what I'm getting about your future spouse. I'm getting some of them have an olive kind of skin tone, some of them have dark hair, and I'm getting um, kind of like a lone wolf type of vibe. Somebody who enjoys being by themselves, somebody who is slightly philosophical, but also confident at the same time. And so I feel that you are going to wait for this person. Like you might kind of have dates in between, but you know on an intuitive level, you really want to click with someone. You don't just want anybody. You really want to click with the right person. This person is the right person because on a personality level, there's something very deep that draws you two together. This person is also very emotional, and so what I'm getting is that they can actually send you signs and symbols if you would like them to. Now, it's not that they're 100% spiritual, it's not that they're super tuned in to the spiritual world in the same way that you might be, but I do think on a intuitive level, there is a connection here between you two. So it doesn't necessarily manifest in seeing them in a dream. Like I said, you might have seen a figure of them or an outline, not necessarily their face, but it can manifest in a mental connection. And so if you are interested in starting to have that mental connection with your future spouse, all you have to do is sit down, meditate every day, and you can really think of good messages and direct them to your future spouse. And this is a really good way to kind of call them in and draw in their energy. We're not trying to control them. Instead, we're just sending them good thoughts by sending them good thoughts and good vibes, you are strengthening your connection to that person, and that person on an energetic level will pick up on it. 
it's very much the same like when people say that if you pray for your plants they will grow you know there's studies that show that if you pray for plants they actually grow faster than ones that don't get prayed for and so it's very similar here with your future spouse so they're coming in they're not quite here yet but they're coming in let's see if there's anything else that you need to know anything dreams visions intuition spiritual connection okay we have storm warning here We have victory. And we have door to value. Okay. Nice. So storm warning, kind of like the tower. <laughs> storm warning is about dealing with difficult emotions. It's kind of like you have to scrape the bottom of the barrel in order to rise back up to the top. And so what I'm getting is this doesn't necessarily connect to your relationship with your future spouse. This connects to some of the feelings you've been dealing with. Having anxiety, feeling like you're behind, feeling like when are they going to come, almost wanting to put pressure on it. It's like you almost want to put pressure on the situation, hoping that by putting pressure on it, it will happen faster. But what I'm getting is no, that's actually not how it happens. Instead of putting pressure, you need to have strength. You need to actually pull back. Remember, you and your future spouse, you're kind of like orbiting each other now. It's almost like ships that pass in the night, but there will be the right time at which you come together, and this is happening over the next two years for many of you. Victory is here. Victory is starting to happen now. So I'm getting that a lot of you are going to be able to tune into your intuition more and therefore have more signals, signs, dreams about them. Because remember, even if you're at a physical distance, the energetic distance might be very small. So you can use dreams, you can use any kind of channeling in order to truly communicate with them. And the other thing that you might like to try is really helping make them feel safe. Like what I'm getting is your future spouse doesn't always feel safe. They feel like they have to constantly be working, constantly be in this pattern. You might even feel that way too, to an extent. But if you can help them feel safe, then you will feel more safe within yourself. And what I'm getting is that all you really have to do is sit down and talk to them mindfully. And of course, it will feel like a one-sided conversation, but, but just do it because it's going to help. And it's going to transmute some of that energy, which is dark and foreboding, into an energy of lightness and victory and confidence. So one thing that you really want to focus on is confidence. That's going to help your relationship a lot. We have door to value here. I think that for many of you, in 10 or 11 months, something radical is shifting in your life. It could be like making a lot of money, it could be getting a new salary, a new investor, a new client, something like that. It could even be you and your future spouse coming together, buying a house, for example. Whatever it is that resonates with you, whatever it is that you pick up on the most. Having a door to value is critical because you know that just like you have to wait on this side, there's something on the other side that is even better. And what's happening is right now the door is opening for you. Over the next two years, you're going to want this door to open further and further until it's no longer semi-closed like here. It should be wide open. That's how it is when you're with someone. That's how it is when you trust someone. That's how it is when you truly love someone. The door is wide open. And so yes, it's going to take some time. It might take up to two years. But is it worth the wait? Absolutely. And over this course of time, you will start to get more dreams and visions of them. This door is opening for you, and it's happening definitely over the next two years. So make sure that you are soaking in any message, because there is someone there for you, and you're going to start seeing more of them the more you're open to it. There's a lot of wisdom, too, as connected to this relationship. So I'm getting a lot about the Akashic Records and like books and philosophy and stuff like that. I think you and your future spouse have a strong connection when it comes to um, past lives, but also innate wisdom. Like you both have a lot of innate wisdom and you both will come together. You are in slightly different phases right now of your life, but it's okay because again, you're going to come together. There's going to be a kindling of the two spirits. There's going to be a connection. And when that connection happens, it's going to feel like a reconnection. 
So to answer the question, you may not have seen them yet in a dream or in a vision, but you definitely can because your spirit guides are now working with you more closely and it would be important that you ask for it. So make sure that you ask them for help. You can literally say, hey, spirit guides, I'm ready to see my future spouse in a vision or in a dream. Please bring him or her to me. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's all you have to do. Just be intentional and then that will definitely come to you and you'll be able to see why your future spouse is so special and so significant in your life. All right, so I think that's all I have for you today, Pile 1. I hope that this gave you some clarity and guidance. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share it if you feel so inclined. And if you would like a reading with me, I will post the links down below. You can also get them in my YouTube banner. I also do coaching and Reiki if you're interested. And I also host events once a month, Manifestation Circles. You can find all of those details on my Instagram. So I will see you all very soon, and thank you so much for watching. Bye! All right, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. So this is your first card. You got the King of Wands. And I'm going to pull a couple other cards here to see if you've had any dreams or visions as connected to your future spouse, and same if they have for you. So I'm getting yes as I'm pulling up these cards. Okay, I'm going to start with these ones. So first of all, I do feel that you and your future spouse have a psychic connection. This is a connection where the groundwork has been laid already. I feel that you are both aware of one another's presence, even if it's not something that you think about a lot. I feel that you know in your heart that person is there and they're not actually that far away. For many of you, if you have not met your future spouse yet, I think it could be as little as two months until you meet them. And I'm getting a lot about um, a lot of random images, so I'm just going to share some in case any of them resonate. I'm getting a lot about hospitals, grandparents, um, schools, books, stuff like that. And so I think that you might meet your future spouse through it's weird it's like through some like family thing or it could be um through an institution like it feels like an institution or it feels like a family thing and for some of you it might even be volunteering because again i'm getting really drawn to the elderly for some reason so um, i wouldn't necessarily think it's just your grandfather or your grandmother although it could be but for others of you, this could be like a volunteering thing where you're helping out. So that's what your spirit guides are saying. They're saying that you have a really open heart. You like to help out. You are a carer, um, a giver. You give people your energy a lot. And your future spouse is very similar in that way. They are also a carer. They're also a giver. They are very willing to support other people. They have an open heart. So that's good. Have you seen them in a dream or vision? Yes, you have, because here we have the King of Wands, the King being a very strong figure and a very um, important character. This person has been um, prominent previously, and so this person, your future spouse, has showed up in your dreams or visions. Wands are all about ideas. This is like bringing the dreams and visions to life, so I really do feel that you've seen them. And I feel that... When you saw them, whether this was a dream or vision, you had a sense that they were special. Perhaps you didn't consciously know that it was your future spouse, but you had a sense of familiarity with them and love with them. And I would describe this as being unconditional love and happiness. We also have the Empress here. And when we see the Empress, this is very intuitive card. This is somebody who is very strong in their intuition and is very strong in their leadership. You might be seen by others as a leader, and I'm getting that providing that you lean into your intuition, it is going to really help you out because I think that a lot of you do have visions. I'm getting like a lot of psychic stuff. I'm seeing a lot of empaths in this group, like really feeling in tune with mother nature, truly feeling in tune with other people's emotions. So yes, I think that you have seen them and you kind of knew that it was them at the time which is very exciting. 
Ace of Cups here, this is about your emotions. So technically, you should be experiencing a well of emotions when you see your future spouse in your dreams and visions. I think for some of you, they come quite often. For others of you, you've seen them up to three times. So there's a lot of cross-section in this group. Some people have seen them tons, others um, not so much. But it's not important how much you've seen them. It's really important how you feel when you see them. And what I'm getting is that the Ace of Cups energy is just a beautiful emotional energy. It is overflowing. Your cup runneth over. It is about success. It is about reaching the pinnacle of those emotions. So I really feel that whatever you have experienced in seeing your future spouse has been something positive for you. It hasn't been something negative. And the interesting thing is here we have the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is about pressure. It's typically about something weighing you down. When we think about dreams and visions in your future spouse, I think the only thing I would say is try and stay in this intuitive space more so than in the practical space all the time. I think you have a lot going on. I think it's important to ground yourself and to be as intuitive as possible. So if you're not meditating every day, I would really carve out time to meditate every single day. If you're not writing your manifestations and your affirmations, then it would be important to do that as well. And I would also say you can really visualize this person. So you don't need to get them 100% perfect, but if you can have some kind of schema or some kind of understanding for how they might look and what role they might pay, play in your life, then I feel that you're going to feel a lot less stressed about this situation. Some of you do feel like you're running against the clock when it comes to having kids and family, getting married and stuff like that, and some of you are comparing yourself to others hardcore. I know it can be so hard to see other people move on and get married and have an amazing life if you are not necessarily feeling that way, but I want you to know that this person is very much here for you, and if you don't already know them, they're coming for you very soon. One thing I will say is when we think about dreams and visions, they're one thing, but we also have our physical plane, which is kind of a completely different thing. And what I'm getting is some of you do know your future spouse, and some of you know this person through school, through a program, through some kind of connection. It's like teaching and learning together. And maybe the connection started as distant, but over time it grew closer. For example, what your spirit guides are showing me as a symbol is like you might have been in a class together and sat on opposite ends of the room and just saw each other and thought you were attractive, but it started as very distant. And then over time, the circle kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and you eventually talk and come together. This person is going to bring you nothing but happiness. We have the Four of Wands here. This is one of the happiest cards. This is about bliss. It is about dreams fulfilled. So very significant that we have dreams in this reading. So I really do feel you have already seen them at least three times, or at least up to three times. Um, and many of you have seen them more. And now that you're watching this video, I think you'll start to see them even more, which is really cool. Let's see if there's any energy cards here, anything you need to know as connected to the situation. You have woman holding coin. The other thing is some of you are at a distance. You have action. Yeah. Some of you are at a distance from your future spouse. Like they're in one country, you're in another. They're in one city, you're in another. There's kind of a, a distance here. However, I want you to know that it is rapidly drawing together. This could be through a trip. This could be through some kind of program. Could be through community service, like I said. It could even be through your employer. But whatever it is, you are the one who is driving it and setting the boundaries. And secondly, there's going to be a lot of action. Action is coming for you because when we see this card, this is kind of like the horse going out from the races. They're ready to go. They're ready to run as fast as possible. And I think that it's been a little bit of time that you've been waiting to really get in contact with this person and this future spouse. But now that you've had the opportunity to see them a couple times in dreams and focus on yourself and your career, um, your cup is going to run over and there will be action taken. So that's exciting. We also have woman holding a coin here. 
This is a weird message. Again, it has nothing to do with dreams and visions, but you might actually be financially more lucrative than your future spouse in terms of salary, money, paycheck kind of stuff. So in the long term, I think they're going to be great for you. I don't think you need to have any qualms about that. But in the short term, you might be the one um, who has more money. So that's just an interesting thing to keep in mind. I also think that when we see this, you are the one who is organizing most of the stuff, planning most of the stuff. Once you get to know them, you might find them to be quite chill. And sometimes it might be a little too chill for you, where you're like, okay, come on. <laughs> it's time to move on. So this is important to know. Okay, so we have the Seven of Swords, the Page of Wands, and the Queen of Cups. So a lot of wand energy in this deck. The King, the Four of Wands, we have the Page of Wands. So wand energy being emotions, ideas, thoughts, feelings, sensations, you are going to be having a lot of these. I do get the relationship is in a younger energy, like I don't think you've called yourself girlfriend, boyfriend yet. However, it feels like you're excited by it because they understand you on a deep emotional level and your emotions are running over right now especially with the full moon you might have more emotions than normal we have the seven of swords here the seven of swords is typically about running away from something it can be sneaky it can feel a little bit like someone does it with guile or they do it intentionally however What I'm getting is that this running away would be for your highest good. So whether it happened now or in the future, this would be for your highest good. Even if you don't want to admit it to yourself, even if it feels weird to say that, this running away is actually going to be beneficial for you. So keep that in mind because that's really going to help as you transition into the next phase. Overall, what I can say for your group is I think that you and your future spouse will be very happy together. I think that you might meet each other in person fairly soon if you haven't already. So remember when you're having dreams and visions and stuff like that, you don't need to always call them in, especially if you're right with them and they're right next to you. But it's more like when they're away or when you're looking for some extra guidance, that's when it could be really helpful. So I hope that this gave you some clarity. I hope it gave you some guidance. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share it if you feel so inclined. And if you'd like a personal reading, you can book using the links in my YouTube banner. You can also find them down below. So thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. All right, group three, welcome to your reading. So this is your first card here. You got the Queen of Swords. And I'm going to be pulling a couple other cards connected to dreams and visions. Um, and how that relates to your future spouse. So let's see what comes through. Here you caught the Eight of Pentacles, the Seven of Cups, the Page of Cups, Oppression, and we're going to pull some other cards here, too. Happy Family. Appreciation. Ooh, and the Temple Path. Okay. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to say is I'm getting that um, some of you are very logical thinkers. Some of you like to compartmentalize your thoughts and they kind of go in stages. Like we have thoughts about creativity and they go in box A, thoughts about work and they go in box B, thoughts about fashion and they go in box C. Of course, I just made all of those categories up, but it's supposed to be a symbol to show that you like to compartmentalize things. And you are probably a very organized person. Um, probably you're the type of person who has structure in their life. And the reason I'm saying that is because you have the Queen of Swords here. So this is both a blessing and a difficulty because when we see the Queen of Swords, 
you are calling in somebody that is a distinct profile. So when you think of your future spouse, you have a pretty clear idea of what you're looking for. You have a strong sense of what would resonate with you most and what would make most sense to you. The part that can make it hard is sometimes because you're so set on that profile, it can be hard for you to see um, all the little tiny symbols and signs that your spirit guides are sending you. And also it can be hard for you to really soak into some of those visions. So what I want to say is I actually think your future spouse has showed up before in visions and dreams, but it is a bit faint. It's not like you would necessarily know exactly who they are. It's more like they might dip in and then as soon as they dipped in, they're kind of out again. Perhaps some of you have had one or two significant experiences where it was a lot deeper because I'm getting that in this group, there's at least one or two of you who have had a deep experience seeing someone and really feeling on a spiritual level like, yes, I saw this person. Yes, I know that that person is significant for me, but I'm getting for the majority of us, we kind of second guessed ourselves when we saw that or weren't really sure. And the reason I'm saying that is these two cards here. So we have the Eight of Pentacles. We also have the Seven of Cups. And your spirit guides kind of want me to read these together. So when we have the Eight of Pentacles here, this is about trusting your intuition more. This is about really building more of a strong connection to the spiritual world. And I think that you already have this. And now it's a question of just really letting it fly and letting it kind of spread its wings and soar. When we have the Seven of Cups here, this is about having a lot of different things going on, but also about different pathways. And that can apply to mental pathways too. Like you might feel like um, you think one way and then you second guess yourself and you ask yourself, was that really my future spouse? Did I really see them? Like, who was that? It felt familiar, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh my gosh, maybe I'm acting crazy. These are thoughts that many of us in this group in particular have. So what your spirit guides are saying is don't oppress yourself. Don't ruin your creativity and your spirituality and your connection to your future spouse through second guessing yourself. When we see this energy of oppression, it can be very cyclical. It can be a second guessing type of energy. But the truth is, there is something here. You have come into contact with something previously, and now your spirit guides really want you to trust it. They're also saying that you have a very strong idea of the long term, like what this person should look like, what their profile should be in the long term, how they should help you, how they should provide for you, and also how you are going to provide for them and support them in their lives. We want to be mindful of not putting all our eggs in that one profile or that one basket. Instead, really being more mindful of all of the little moments where your future spouse might come into play. Because what I'm getting is that on an energetic level, your future spouse has already sent to you some offering. Many of you have already met this person. Many of you are in contact with them. I'm seeing a lot about digital communication and media. Perhaps you've been DMing them on Instagram. Perhaps some of you are in websites or online groups with them. Some of you know who this person is. I'm getting that it's not completely foreign to you. There have been clues sent to you and your spirit guides are saying don't second guess yourself. Stop putting yourself in this cyclical way of thinking because actually you have seen them and there has been an offering in the past. What I want to say is your um, future spouse energy is really promising for the long term because these are three very spiritual cards. We have happy family, appreciation, and the temple path. So I'm going to start here for a second. When we see the temple path, this is all about trust and it's about being divinely guided towards something. And when we see your future spouse and think about them, it's like they're right there in the distance and you're right here and all you have to do is walk these steps. And I get the sense that many of you are growing a lot in your spiritual journey and are really expanding your mind and you're starting to unlock the possibility of really working with your spirit guides, working with visions, working with different healing modalities, and you're starting to unlock the fact that actually not everything just exists on our 3D plane. There's a lot on the 5D. There's a lot in your dreams, in your creativity that exists and is going to connect you to your future spouse. So by virtue of going on the spiritual journey and really opening up your mind in that way, you are going to appreciate them more. 
And the best way to bring someone in is to appreciate them before they are even fully in your life. So I was saying this to group one, but sitting down, sending your future spouse love, sending them appreciation, letting them know that you love the fact that they're there, you love the fact that they're in your life, and talking to them as if you already know everything about them, as if they already are sitting right next to you, that is really going to accelerate the way that you two will come into contact with each other. And then by doing that, you'll get more dreams, you'll get more visions. I think you've seen them in the past, like I said, they've definitely come in visions. It could be like a meditation, it could be like a dream that you've had in the past, but you've seen them before. You have touched their essence and you're going to continue to see them more and more and more. I'm also getting a lot of energy about the night. So you might be a night owl or you might feel like the night is when you come alive. Um, I'm getting that the night is important for you and that's an important time for you to manifest and communicate with your future spouse even on an energetic and spiritual level. And here, these are like these really beautiful kind of fairy-like lights and I'm getting that there's going to be a lot more communication between you two over the coming months, especially over the next two to four months. I think that you are going to get a strong sense of who this person is as long as you appreciate them. So what I'm saying is you kind of have to appreciate before you even know fully all of the details. Get rid of the logical side of you when it comes to the situation. Get rid of the impression. Instead, focus on the offering, all of the little magical details that come into your life. Don't second guess yourself. Instead, focus on the spiritual side of you, the side that trusts, the side that really leans in. And what is the outcome? Well, look, you're going to have a very happy family. This is extremely significant. You are going to meet your partner. The rainbow is coming out after the cloudy days. You are going to have children for many of you. I think most of you want children and you will have them and you're going to have a very happy bond with this person. This person is everything that you could want them to be and more. When we have appreciation here, this is also, um, it's kind of like foreshadowing because you are going to appreciate them. There is a commitment growing here. There's more stuff to come, stuff that you don't even know yet, and your mind is going to be blown beyond belief because this person is everything you want and more. It's like they give you the cherry on top in addition to all the other things that you would have asked for. So you're going to have a very happy family, and I feel that your life in the future is going to be very safe, very secure, and very blessed. So I feel really happy for you. So group three, my best advice is really just lean in to um, trusting your spirit guides and appreciating. And the more that you appreciate and the more that you recognize that offerings have been given to you and that you have seen them in dreams and visions before, the more you'll see them again and again and again. And remember, you have seen them before, so you might take some time to just reflect and journal on any kind of characters, figures, people that have come to you in dreams and visions. Um, some of you have had really powerful experiences where you've actually kind of seen something into the future. I'm getting that clearly, but I wouldn't say it's the majority. I think it's a select few of you. But everybody, regardless of whatever group you fall into, try and journal and try and really write down whatever it is that you saw because then you're going to call that person in and that person's going to come to you sooner. So I'm really excited for you. I feel like everything's working out really well. Um, just make sure that you kind of tamper down the negative um, thoughts or the logical thoughts because that can drive out the more fluid, creative, and spiritual energy. And you're going to need the creative and spiritual energy in order to walk this temple path and in order to have this very happy family at the end of the day. So I hope this helped you. I hope it gave you some clarity and guidance. If you liked it, please give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it if you feel so inclined. And if you would like a personal reading with me, you can book using the links in my YouTube banner or the links down below. I also have a Patreon. I'm also leading events, which you can see on my Instagram. And I also do coaching. So if you feel drawn to any of those things, please check it out down below. I would really love and appreciate it. Thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye.